This is Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Today I have a great interview for you in Vilcabamba, Ecuador with a guy I know. He's the sharpest guy I know. Let's get started. Hey, welcome this morning. We're here with my good friend, Wayne. Wayne, how are you? Doing all right. It's a good day today. Nice, bright, sunny. <laughs> yes, it is. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Wayne, can you tell us, um, where are you from originally? Well, I grew up in a little town in Wisconsin called Osseo. It's about 30 miles south of Eau Claire. Um, frigid cold in the wintertime, so that's reason, one of the reasons why I'm here. Um, but it's beautiful here. So, Wayne, how long have you lived in Vilcabamba? Uh, four and a half years. Four and a half years. So Wayne's been here about uh, six months less than we have. We came almost at the same time. Almost. Almost. So Wayne, tell me about your business here in Vilcabamba. Well, I run a sharpening service. It's just a continuation of what I, what I did in the U.S. Um, in Phoenix, Arizona, I was sharpening there and doing pretty much full service sharpening for about 10 years. And I've continued when I came here. I just brought my tools down. Um, I had a lot of clientele. My clientele mainly um, went to the executive chefs, the homeowner um, for knives and stuff, but it actually expanded much farther than that to where I'm doing scissors for like um, seamstresses, um, garden implements, just everything. Um, the things that I don't do, like so circular saw blades, hand saws I can. And a lot of it is um, just tooling and also experience. Um, I saw a need for it when I got here because a lot of the knives that I saw were not up to good using quality. And so it was one of those things to where I just brought out my tools, found a place to be, and started working. I can tell you Wayne sharpens all my machetes. He sharpens my kitchen knives, my pocket knives. He does a wonderful job. And uh, a lot of people here use Wayne for the services. Yeah, a lot of it's just what most people have to work at, I do instinctively. Um, like with knives and stuff, if you have to fight to cut through a steak, you're doing it wrong. And the knife isn't sharp. And there are simple ways to take care of your knives, too. There are the MacGyver methods that I like to tell people about. One, you can use the bottom of your, of your porcelain or ceramic coffee cup. It's about the best stone you'll have in the house. Um, there's, it's, like I said, there's just so many ways of doing it. But if you need things repaired, serviced, things of that nature, I can do it. And the oddball things that you're wondering about, like liquid or like um, blender blades, uh, food processor blades, um, the oddball stuff I do too. It's hard to find somebody to do it, not including even ceram um, serrated knives. Uh, there are people, in, there's areas in the states where nobody knows how to do them. I happen to be one of them. It's just kind of like second nature to me. And plus, down here, I have fun with it. In the States, I was doing close to two to 3,000 knives a month. That's knives alone. Scissors, more than I care to count. Um, any form of uh, work implement, that too. So it was just a matter of you. I was pretty much an all-around sharpening service. It, it's not an easy job. And there are times I am looking for some help, but it has to be the right kind of help. I, they've got to get along with me, and I need to, they need to be willing to learn and not go off of what they, know, what they think they know. So, Wayne, if someone brought, say, a machete or a kitchen knife to you, about how long do you think they would have to wait to have that done, typically? Um, kitchen knives, usually two to three minutes or five minutes max per. But if I've got a line of people, it could, you know, usually I just tell people come back in an hour. 
Uh, machetes, the same thing. Uh, machetes are a lot more work than kitchen knives. Uh, first of all, I have to reapply the edge because normally when they come in, they're beat. Um, Nick stuff. I, I'm very fussy on what I do with my, with my work. It has to work right or I'm not willing to even charge for it because it's one of those things to where it's my pride and my reputation on the line. That's, a, that's very important, and, and Wayne has a good reputation here in Vilcabamba. Um, as I said, a lot of my friends use Wayne, we use him, and uh, we enjoy his work, and, and his prices are so extremely reasonable, um, it's not worth trying to do it myself. He's got all the equipment here. What would, like a, a new machete when you buy it out of the uh, um, hardware store, you'd probably spend two to three hours getting an edge on it, maybe, and that's if you're lucky. Uh, me, I'm usually done with it in about 15 to 20 minutes, and then you can pick it up and go to work with it. So I, I didn't show you. I, I have a new acquisition. Ah. It's brand new. That's a Damascus knife. Yes. Yeah, when, if you have specialty knives, things that you are worried about having done, that's not a problem for me. Now, there are others that you could take them to to where you wish you'd have came to me first. So, yes, I'm very familiar with this blints. I'm very familiar with the different steels used in knives, and I do things that other people can't. Damascus knives are extremely tricky to do because you're dealing with folded steel and with folded steel if you do it wrong it's not a good day so um, do we need to put an edge on that or is that good enough well, let's, let's see that's a little rough but it'll do for now bring it in when it's ready <laughs> okay straight out of the box that's not too shabby no get your seal of approval there are some knives that when you buy them from the store, they don't do anything with it. It's just basically they wave a grinder at it and tell you it's sharp. Uh, that's not exactly the case. Like with straight razors, if you try to um, shave with them straight out of the box, it's not a good day. They need to have an initial ed edge put on them by somebody who knows what they're doing, which happens to be me. Uh, those are hard to do. Um, with kitchen knives, a good knife, you shouldn't have to work. We, I had a lady in um, Mesa, Arizona, that was complaining about her wrist hurting all the time. And what ended up happening was, and I was told this by an executive chef, that the duller the knife, the harder you have to work. Well, I found out that she did a lot of kitchen or cooking in the kitchen. And I said, well, why don't you bring your knives in and let's see if that helps. Because right now, the way your knives are, are they're, they're not cutting for you. You're having to work hard and force everything. Well, she brought her knives in. I sharpened them up, handed them back. And about three weeks later, she came back to me and said, thank you, because her wrists had stopped hurting because she didn't have to work so hard to do, cook her food. So, little things like this that the people don't think about. They're all interconnected. Uh, my job is to make things work easier for you so you don't have to work as hard. So, that's pretty much it on that. But So, Wayne, can you tell people where you're located so they can find you? Okay, I am on the corner of Juan Montalvo and Boulevard, which is uh, two blocks from Cacpe Loja and Park Central and uh, getting towards the Coliseum. Um, normally I'm only opens on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. But all other times, if you call the number that's behind us, uh, which is 098-067-0516, I can give you instructions on how to drop them off and then I'll get to them as you know the order goes. And also, 
sometimes during the week I need to come down to my shop and do things and I get them done a little earlier. And then one of my policies is, is that when I'm finished, I always like to send you a text to let you know they're ready for pickup. And then you come by when you're ready and call me first because again, I don't live next to my shop. I will uh, make arrangements for you to pick them up and we'll just go, f and that's the easiest way to do it. But uh, again, the name of my business is, in Spanish, Maestro Afila Afilado Servicios, which is Master Sharpening Services. And in here, I am, an, they call me more of an Arizano, and they also call me Master, so one of those things, but I'm okay with it. There it's a go. sign of respect. Well, at the beginning of this uh, video, the little introduction I made said I was going to introduce you to the sharpest guy I know. <laughs> now you know who it is. <laughs> so I hope you'll come and visit Wayne when you're in Vilcabamba. If you live here, I hope you bring him some business. And um, this is a, a noisy corner, which is good for Wayne for his business. We have a lot of motorcycles, a lot of taxis and trucks. This is kind of typical life on the street here in Vilcabamba. And um, I look forward to seeing you. Or as they would say in, in Spanish, te esperamos. Si. So, we thank you so much for tuning in and watching today. We hope that you'll subscribe and give us the thumbs up. Bless you. Have a good day. Ciao.